Tony, mm. have you been to an event like this before, this sort of expo style event? Um, I've I've never been to one that's so heavily focused on the cosplay stuff. That's interesting. Having two kids that pass their teenage years, and, you know, it would have been quite fascinating for them to attend five years ago. But now they're both in college. Um, I've worked with Brian Cooney three. This is my third time doing one of his events. Two other times in Birmingham. So okay. it's nice to be in London proper. We're almost <laughs> closer <laughs> than before. So do you enjoy this whole sort of meeting your fans face to face? Yeah, I wouldn't have flown 10 hours on a plane and you know, survived jet lag and woke up at 2 in the morning with absolutely nothing to do. A read of a new act of terrorism. Um, I go back on Monday and then I have three days off before I start a new film in the States called Unbroken. So this time of year is always very productive for me. Or the other, and it's always good to meet somebody that has genuine enthusiasm for something that you've done. And I've been lucky that I have a nice long laundry list. <laughs> you know. You've got an excellent career full of, you know, from appearing in Star Trek to Smallville to the yeah, Candyman so. films to, you know, mainstream films like uh, The Rock and mm -hmm. so forth. What? So I leave out Transformers as his main. Of course, as it gets. of course, that, the biggest thing out there. Um, what's been your, the funnest? The funniest is, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, in seven years of school, got my master's degree. It was going back and forth between teaching, which I did do for two years, and then I finally realized I need to go to New York City. Uh, I, you know, my biggest forte is, is theater, and uh, so I've been lucky to do Broadway and got my start doing a lot of off-Broadway stuff. Um, uh, the, the, the fun part, the most fun, is the fact that I got five assorted action figures out there. Some of the more eclectic stuff I've done from Candyman to Star Trek to Transformers to Stargate. And one day when they lock me up in a padded room, one way to keep me happy will be to bring out my little action figures and I'll just like, you know, until they take them away <laughs> without destroying anything. What would you say was the, the big break for you when you, you, your career? Was it getting well, into Broadway or was it getting into the films? First? Well, as a theatre trained actor, mm. doing any type of stage is a big break because, you know, there's okay. so, for all of us that do make a living, there's like thousands that don't that will give up their dream too soon. So for everybody that I teach or try to find their inner passion, I tell them, you don't know when it's going to happen. It's a matter of persistence, perseverance, patience. Imagination. Uh, you know, I got my equity card for two weeks of arriving in New York, but it was a theater company where we had to book our own shows and do everything from painting of the flats to sewing the costumes to, to just surviving on the road. I guess the thing that put me where I am today is when I got cast in Platoon, um, which was a result of my doing a one man show called Johnny Got His Gun, which is based on a famous political piece and got that, but we all were assembled in the Philippines. We had no idea what we were involved in. And the good thing about that movie, in addition to the grueling conditions, was that mostly everybody in that cast has gone on to, to some degree of success. You know, from Johnny Depp, to Charlie Sheen, to Willem Dafoe, to Forrest Whitaker, to myself, Keith David, Corey Glover from the great band Living Color. It was just a great collection of people. Has there been a particular director? I haven't obviously worked with Oliver Stone. Um, he's a great director, but you've it's worked awesome. with some fabulous directors I've seen in your career. Is there anyone particular that you've really had a great connection with, though? Or you've been really sort of blown away by what he's done? Well, Oliver, what he's been doing? I mean, I'll never forget what Oliver did for me. He hand selected me, he put me from obscurity to some sort of mid level notoriety. Um, I think that any director that hires an actor, there's a report that's already built in because they selected you. For some reason, you're a part of their vision. You're a part of what they want to be their movie. Um, ultimately, I'm going to be directing, so I'm going to be able to pass that on. And having done you know, over 100 films, I can pretty much, including a few bad ones, uh, not to pay the mortgage. But um, I think I'll be able to discern bullshit from truth. 
and that's all we're looking for, right? Someone to just believe in yourself and then don't worry about the day-to-day of am I good, am I good, am I good. If you're selected, then obviously you have what it's in you to, to, to embody that character. So you're going to direct a film. Is it based on a script you've written? Yeah, I, I, I actually got my master's in, in playwriting, so, oh. I, but I got distracted by wearing this coat. So, yeah. Uh, it's a film called Erie PA, which is about small-time uh, hustlers in a small city in the United States. Uh, so it's a timeline thing. They have 72 hours to pay a debt. It's a test of their loyalty and commitment. But you, in order to do it, I also have to play one of the guys. So. Are you going to star and direct? So yeah. Are you, are you looking forward to that dual, dual role then, being behind the camera and in front of the camera? Yeah, the, the acting would be easy. The hard part is uh, getting everybody to trust me and to bring out the best because I'm going to use a lot of my friends, so I don't want to disappoint them. You know. Um, if you um, hadn't gotten to the acting, yeah, would you would you have still gone in through that teaching career, or would you? I probably would have been a teacher or um, in another life a jazz musician. I'm a huge music fan. I'm going to go see Ronnie Scott's while I'm here. You know, must do. Maybe not tonight, but tomorrow night for sure. Um, so yeah, it would be somewhere in there, or you know, doing volunteer bridge building in Indonesia. Hmm. I mean, and some of these things I do anyway. Like one of the things about Candyman that has enabled me to do things. That movie won't die. Uh, not a day goes by in the states where you know, which is difficult for an actor because that's something that I made 17 years ago. You know, and life goes on, but. I acknowledge that people have respect for it, but it allows me, I do a lot of gang intervention work in the States, and, uh, and it gives me a chance to have dialogue because they respect the character, then I'm able to sit down and say, okay, you two can do something that's productive and not, you know, detrimental to the community or, or yourselves.